Liani. And I'm Crystal Diola. And today we are talking about self-discovery. Yes, finding me. Whew, finding you. I'm really excited about this topic. Me too. Um, because we talked about this before and I'm in a completely different space mm-hmm. now than I was when I... Four or five months ago. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really, I, I'm excited to hear, um, I want to talk about the differences between last time and this mm. time and what you what kind of changes you've experienced too. Sometimes I wish I did better at like vlogging. Uh huh. So I can like literally look back and think about how I was thinking back then. You know what I mean? Do you journal? No. Okay. So I also, I have stints where I'm like, I'm journaling a lot and then sometimes I'm not. Mm. But recently I've been journaling and it's, I've never journaled like this before. Like writing. Yes. But I've I've always wrote like my thoughts and like Mm -hmm. prayers and things like that. But the way that I'm journaling now is no, like no other time before. Yeah. So. Is it like, this is what I'm thinking? Like. No. So you want to get into it now? You want to get into it? Okay. Let's do our, let's do our one liner. Sorry. Y'all, we got real. (laughs) I know. That's not okay. That's, you normally, that's normally what I that's do. Usually her. Okay, so we're gonna jump into our one-liner segment. Yes, Liana's gonna go first. Yes. Okay. So I'm done with being humble because I know that I'm that bitch. Okay. Okay. Maybe. It's about time everybody recognize. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is I may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm always gonna pour into me. Okay. okay. Drip, 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 drip. <laughs> Actually, like, like I said, we. <laughs> We wrote a lot of this months ago and we had Correct. to reshoot because stuff be happening. Okay. But this quote, yo, if this don't really speak to Crystal today, <laughs> I feel like I was manifesting it then. Now I'm living yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? Like, when we go back and uh, listen to our episodes for editing, I be speaking to myself. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I am getting enriched. And like, I, even though I said the words, yeah. I'm like even there's times where I've given encouragement or gave, give recommendations mm-hmm. and... I need it when I had to listen back to right. it to post it. So I'm like, so we're speaking to ourselves it's, as well. It's important to like, when you have these moments, like record them. So this is our, our record. Yes. Um, for one day Maverick to watch, one day my kids to watch. Like, let's mm-hmm. look at what mama was thinking about. I know. But you know how on Facebook it will say this time 20 years ago, this mm-hmm. time 15 years ago. Sometimes those little reminders, like I'll write like a post 20 years ago and I'm like, ooh. It, it hit. I needed like, that quote today. I'm like, I can't believe I even said that. Right, like, I was deep. I was okay, like, oh, like, okay. Snap, 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 snap. 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 <laughs> uh, but let's jump into our next segment. Who said that? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So, who said that? The quote is, I'm rooting for everyone black. <laughs> So, I wonder who said that. Okay, give so me the clip. Just give me the hint. Okay, okay. So this it's a it's a woman, it's a girl. Okay. Mm-hmm. She is um, black excellence at its finest. Okay. She is, um, you know, down for the culture. Mm-hmm. And she has a way of depicting the culture like nobody else. It's so accurate, but also so funny. Yeah. Well, I know who it is. because <laughs> Everyone knows this quote. Right, that was just my time to sound off. I just wanted to give Issa her moment <laughs> exactly. on our podcast. But it's Issa Rae. Yes. Yes. I started watching her in undergrad on YouTube. Awkward Black Girl. Okay, that's me why too. I, I didn't watch Insecure. I'm sorry, guys. That's so. That's weird that you watch Opera Black Girl but didn't watch Insecure. Yeah, like, because that was like the one of them was moment. free to access, and the other one required HBO. Okay? Oh, well, I had to. I had to get it on the action. I, I was like, know. I can't believe I was it. missing out. But now it's on Netflix. And I keep saying I'm gonna start. And I just haven't started because mm-hmm. I feel like once I start, I'm gonna be addicted because that's my energy. Okay. Like I watched Game of Thrones in like a month. <laughs> oh <laughs> so, yeah, me and Robert did too. We was in, we took like, us longer than a month, but we was we were locked in, and yeah. then I was so. Did, what did you think about the final episode then? The I was, whole last season? I know season? a lot of people didn't like it, but I was at peace with it. I would, it, I, did, eh, I don't know. That was bittersweet. I wanted Jon Snow to have a way better ending. Mm. Are you kidding me? He came back like, to life. He had a lot going on this No, season. but he was the, the, like, the thread throughout the entire. He was. I really liked his character. whole entire series. And then you just give him that whack ending. I'm like, yeah. he need to be king or something. something. And then, um, but I like the little boy being the boss of everything. The little all-knowing boy. His no, little brother. That was also very lame. What? Who else would have done it and wouldn't have gotten Brendan, crazy? Like, I would have, Brendan could have been like a wise person, but he didn't need to be like <laughs> the whole, the, over the whole shebang. Everything. Like, and then Daenerys had that crazy downfall. Uh, what is it? Queen of Dragons? Yeah, I uh, wanted K- her to Khaleesi. win too. Khaleesi. I wanted her to win too. But yeah. Anyway, that's a huge tangent. Okay. (laughs) That's not has nothing to do with our topic of the day. But it kinda does. Okay, we really want to connect. Okay, okay. 
if you want to write a connect, our topic is self discovery, and I feel like Daenerys, now all of them, especially, especially her. Arya. Aria, Ooh, yeah, yes. uh, everything was like the culmination of self finding yourself. Mm-hmm. That whole show was about finding people's true colors yes. and what they were meant to do in this world. Right, Littlefinger, that was a crazy. Oh my goodness, like, they really got him at the end. Oh, that was crazy. He was, oh, he bothered my soul. <laughs> oh, but when you think about the main character, they all started one way mm-hmm. and went through ups and downs, highs and lows, yeah. until they found who they were. Sam, he had a good even art, uh, the, story the daughter arc. who I didn't like, who kept trying to marry everybody. Um, Oh, 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 Sansa. San- I couldn't stand her half oh, yeah. the season. But she really evolved. Mm-hmm. She really grew she up. She did have a good She really matured. Arc. And she became yeah. a really, really good person at the end of it. Mm-hmm. But she self-discovery. Look exactly. at us making Look it connect. It, make it, making it connect. Everything is about self-discovery. Making it connect. What type of story are you writing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, the topic is managing seasons of self-discovery as an entrepreneur. Yes. And so we wanted to read some stories from some of you all. Um, but before we did that, I wanted like us to share our definitions of what is self-discovery. Okay. So for me, self-discovery is finding your why and not being afraid to pivot your why as you grow. And for me, it's unearthing your confidence and your authentic self. It means getting rid of anything that suppresses these things like old mindsets, self-loading beliefs and people who don't support mm. you like that three um, hit it right there that hits me so hard yeah. right now um, in this season of change and transformation I'm going through so always. it's so hard not to focus on the ones who don't you know what I mean don't mm-hmm. whatever they just don't it's, <laughs> it's so easy to like feel like they are the majority but they're yeah, not right. you know what I mean right um, it's, it's so much better to focus on those who do because it, there's a lot more of those who do than don't. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like if I focus on everyone who didn't come to my party, I wouldn't have appreciated the ones who did. Right. Yeah. And it's so easy to do that. Like I'm going to focus on those who don't like my post, but f- ignore the 400 who did. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's easy to do it. But I think as you learn yourself and, and start to love yourself, you stop caring as much about those who don't. You so. do because it takes up so much time when you could be enriching yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pouring into you. Yeah. All right. So do you want to read the Reddit story? Do you want me to read the Reddit? You can split it if you want. You can read it. Okay. So I'm excited to share the story with you guys. So you ready? Here's mm-hmm. the story. We I actually haven't read through the whole thing. So we're going to be finding okay. out as we go. So hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I want to reach out because I'm feeling really lost lately. And I'm hoping some of you might have some insight or advice to share. For a long time, I've been struggling with self-esteem issues, procrastination, and a general sense of aimlessness in my life. It feels like I'm drifting along, not really making any progress towards the person I want to be or the life I want to live. I understand, girl. Recently, I came across a story from someone who completely turned their life around through self-improvement, and it got me thinking. How do you even start a journey like that? How do you figure out what your values are, let alone align your life with them? And self-awareness, that's something I've been struggling with. How do you become more in tune with your emotions and actions? Distractions seem to be everywhere, pulling me from what's truly important. I spend way too much time strolling mindlessly through social media. My inbox is constantly overflowing with emails that I know deep down I really don't need to be reading. How do I eliminate these distractions and focus on what truly matters? But maybe the hardest part of me is communication. I've always been closed off when it comes to talking about my feelings and asking for what I need. It's like I'm afraid of being vulnerable, afraid of rejection. How do I become a better communicator both with yourself and with others? I know this is a lot to unpack, but I'm really struggling right now. I can use some guidance. If any of you have been through similar experiences and have any advice to share, I'll be incredibly grateful to hear it. Thank you all for taking the time to read this. It means more to me than you know. That was good. It was good. It was so good. Because so I connect. <laughs> in depth Girl. and transparent. It's like the well written feelings. Yeah. I love it. Because um, that's certainly better than I, what, I, what I could have written. And um, yeah. it's certainly more than I have the answers to. Yeah. But I mean, but even her saying that she struggled with being vulnerable and communicating she yes. communicated and was very vulnerable in mm-hmm. this right so i think sometimes we have we think things are issues they aren't they just aren't unlocked right because she is a great communicator mm-hmm. she communicated her feelings very well very well and she was very open right. right and sometimes so just to get into the meat of the stuff that she's talking about like both i can hear you like relating to this when mm-hmm. i read it i completely relate it with it and i'm like 
why basically I'm in between who I am and and what I and who I want to be, mm-hmm. but I don't know how to start and get to and what the steps look like to get from who yeah. I am now to who I want to be. Mm-hmm. Plus all of the you know um, negative thoughts or ruminating the things that you ruminate on that make you want to Does stay not start. yeah not start stay in your you know limited belief mm-hmm. stay in your insecurity mm-hmm. and those things that keep you bound to your old self yeah. um, and that feels like it's impossible to move on yeah past that yeah so um for me what you, you meant you said a minute ago like the some things need to be unlocked you are living it we're living our lives and mm-hmm. every time we go to enrich ourselves to learn something to we hear we heard something in church or we heard something from a, a motivational speaker we saw that post online or something like that those are little drops in the bucket mm-hmm. that for when you need them when you when your brain and your body and that connection happens where it's like enough is enough mm-hmm. it's time for me to be me mm-hmm. it's time for me to live to my fullest life mm-hmm. all those things that you collected over the years you will learn to use yeah. them and so for this it's like it some of this comes is going to come with time and just experiences that need to happen yeah where you're pressed up against the wall and you're like i need a different life i need something when else. you when you are tired your desire to change has to um has to be bigger than your desire to stay the same yeah I think, so when, sorry to get to no, 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 I, I agree with that. And I think sometimes I always say like we are we are our biggest roadblock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> our thinking, our 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 self-defeating thoughts. I think what I like about her story, just how I know that she is very close to her breakthrough, mm-hmm. she didn't blame anybody. Yeah. Yes. She didn't say, Well, I can't because that's so good. And I don't have money. And no one helps me and I don't have support and I don't, my job isn't great. And I don't have a car and I don't have, she didn't give any excuses. She took full ownership of my life is not where I want to be because I need to make a change. And I think that is the first step towards making a change. Right. It's owning that you can't change anyone but yourself, Mm -hmm. but you have control over changing yourself. And I, I, that's the thing that's encouraging to me about her is I think she just needs tools Mm-hmm. but she is very close because she's a great communicator. She's already in a vulnerable place. She knows what's wrong. Like she says, I'm struggling with self-esteem. Mm-hmm. So it seems an issue. I'm struggling with procrastination issue. I'm struggling with aimlessness. She doesn't know her, what she's working towards. Mm. So she knows she has it all within her. And I believe that like we have the solutions within us. We just think that we don't. And I think it's also difficult where it's like you can have the you even though the, like I said, those little coins that get dropped into your psyche, into your into your, you know, your mindset mm-hmm. that you can tap into when it's time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, okay, I have all this, but how do I organize it and put it into action? Mm-hmm. And I struggle with that. I've I've struggled with that a lot before, but I'm coming into figuring that out, mm-hmm. like with the journaling stuff I'm gonna get into in a minute, is when you when you have an action plan that's already set out for you or you where you can figure we figure out I'm gonna do eight step A, B, and C, even if it's to get to a place where you're more self aware or mm-hmm. you're more confident, it helps you to take those steps yeah. so you're not just kinda like floating in um like misunderstanding or floating in just not the unknown yeah. basically. You have it takes the unknown and make it and makes it reality of like make a makes it a reality of how to get to your actual I agree. Uh, goals basically. I love that and I remember going through this season like I, I was in college when I went through it where I literally felt like I spent a year it was right right before I was about to graduate and I felt like oh my god I have to be an adult now and mm-hmm. I have no idea like I had a major but I was like mm-hmm. I don't I just pick something to graduate. Right, paying bills is just hits different when you don't yeah. have the safety net of college like, and parents. When you're a student, it's like a safety bubble. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're an adult, but like not really. Right. Right. I mean, like you don't have any real responsibilities yet. Some people don't. Some people do. But I knew now I'm graduating. Now I'm, I'm supposed to succeed in life. I'm supposed to be doing something in this world now. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I remember I spent like a year, like I feel like I was in a little mini depression of like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know who I want to be. I don't know how I want to be it. And I remember I spent a lot of time praying, a lot of time doing a lot of things trying to find my why. But I feel like once I found my why, it was like a click. Mm-hmm. And that's been my guiding instructional guide as I make decisions in life. Like every major decision I've made, I check with, is this a, does this align with my why? Does this make sense on who are meant to be in this world. It kind of helps guide your decisions. And so we have some steps that we kind of created. They're not the 
be all end all, but we hope that it will help some of you on your journey to finding your why. So if you want to jump in, Leon, you can go first. Okay. So um, the first step, and so I'm going to kind of be dipping and dabbling in these steps because mm-hmm. there's some things that I'm, I'm going to change Okay. Um, from my perspective. So self-reflection and mindfulness is the, it's the first thing, though, mm-hmm. no matter what it is mm-hmm. that you're doing, like finding your why. Sometimes for me, I didn't know what my why was coming mm-hmm. out of college. I did not. I didn't know to do the self-reflection yeah. or anything about mindfulness at the time to figure that out. Mm-hmm. During that downtime I had where I was desperate for a job and trying to find employment and, you know, you know, pounding the pavement. Mm-hmm. Also with this chip on my shoulder um, with with. Uh, like society and God because mm-hmm. I felt this sense of entitlement like I did the work why am I not being rewarded right. for it and if I would have had the um, foresight to do the self-reflection of mindfulness mm-hmm. that entire year could have been used for something more fruitful yeah. than more than complaining and like you know blaming the world for, my, for where I was yeah there's this quote Quiet the mind, the soul will speak mm-hmm. by Maya Haya Sati Bhagavati. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put that in the uh, in the notes below right. so you can find the quote. <laughs> but I, I believe that with all my heart. Quiet your mind because when you have so many people's opinions, social media, what you just saw on TikTok, everything swarming in your head, it's hard to see the path through. It's hard mm-hmm. to see what are you supposed to do. And so sometimes taking 10 to 15 minutes Letting your every day, letting your brain just calm down, clear out, start over and figure out what is left there that is meant for you can make the world of difference with your rest, with your sleep, with your focus, with you finding your why. Um, we don't get paid for this, but there's this app called Headspace. But if you want to sponsor us, Headspace, <laughs> Headspace or Calm. And they do some um, mindfulness kind of walk you through it. It's not like woo woo yoga or anything like that. It's not spiritual. It's just helping people quiet their mind. It's more mental health focused. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's important to start. I mean, you talk about journaling. That's another way yes. to quiet your mind. So, yeah. So journaling is a way to not just quiet your mind, but organize your your thoughts. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we, I have a lot of thoughts swimming in my head about that related to the things you're talking about, self-esteem, mm-hmm. um, you know, being what, what, what my purpose is, where am I, like, you know, trying to, if I'm feeling aimless or something like that, mm-hmm. um, capturing what I'm actually thinking because mm-hmm. those thoughts can get convoluted sometimes. Yeah. So if, I'm, if I take time to quiet my mind and start to parse through those thoughts, mm-hmm. then I can, it's actually easier for me to heal yeah, those places. that's good. So doing journaling, at least getting, once it's out of my head, I don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. Once it's written down and then I can sort through those things yeah. and that can help you find your why. Yeah. And sometimes like people say hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Um, I think journaling is a way to kind of speed up your hindsight because mm. once you put it down, now it's hindsight. Yeah. Right. But if it's just in your mind, it's present. Yeah. So it's hard for you to see it. Mm-hmm. So sometimes writing it down, vlogging it, whatever it is, it helps you look back at it and be like, huh, I didn't think about that. Right. This is I see a, a pattern here. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the, there's a therapy practice that we're taught. It's about genogram. I don't know if you know what genogram is, mm-hmm. but it's like a family tree. OK. And you put all your family in there and you put everything you know about these people. Like my mom was married for this long and then got divorced, had this many kids. She doesn't get along with these kids. There's there's issues here. So you there's can see patterns. In, so you can start to see yeah. the pattern. And you do it as far back as you can remember through mm-hmm. your family line. That's a good, that's good. I love doing it because people are always like, oh crap. Mm-hmm. I never, oh dang. Mm-hmm. Like all the women in my family are divorced? Yeah. Dang. Or none of them had a good relationship with their daughters? What is mm-hmm. that about? Right. And you realize like maybe this is something that I need to break. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't real- I thought it was just me. But now that I look at it, right, it's gotta, been the last 10 generations. You have to put that effort in. So for whoever wrote in about this, that's a that would be a good exercise. Yeah. Because and here's the thing. When you're feeling like this, like you really need a purpose in life, mm-hmm. honestly, because with purpose, you have you can have confidence yeah. with purpose. You have these this, these friends and these people in my life. I got to cut you out because yeah. you're not you're in not line affecting, in. you're not aligned with the uh-huh. purpose. Purpose, you know, not saying you got to be all for me or whatever. We got to be best buds or something like that. But for my mission, what my purpose is, mm-hmm. you got to be put into another section, type of thing. And so, I forgot my point. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the genogram and seeing. Yes. Yeah. So doing that, starting off going deep into your roots, mm-hmm. is so helpful to for me, yeah. and I think it's helpful for many, many people yeah. because it allows you to under to start going, getting, like I said, to the root of. 
where you want to go and yeah. where where you come from. Yeah. And so, so why does why do you why are you so passionate about this? Right. You don't even know exactly. where it came from. And you know all, what I mean? all the things that were that were created to bring you here into this world and to live this life, mm-hmm. they all have they all work in your yeah. sphere for a reason yeah. and in a, some type of way. Yeah. And so taking time and not feeling like this is woo woo or like this is not going to really help mm-hmm. is that you're making a mistake when you take that approach with yeah. doing this type of work yeah. because it helps you so much with getting a solid foundation. Yeah. That they always say there's nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. That doesn't just go with like uh, fashion. It's really even the things that you're struggling with, the things you're passionate about, nothing's new under the sun. Someone mm-hmm. has been just like you and felt just the way you felt. And they might have been in your family, might have been your grandma. Right. Or your great grandma just never came up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like what if you had a family member who loved interior design and you just didn't know because know. they didn't call it that. Yeah. But your grandma's house would always fly. Like right. it opens up conversation. It helps you figure out like, man, maybe that's why I love this so much. Mm-hmm. This makes sense. It just it's a great activity, but it, it's all about like journaling and writing things out and looking at things and, and making it real so you can identify what makes sense and why am I here? And, mm-hmm. you know, so it's great. Yeah. Um, the second one, identifying your passions. I am a passion, passionate person <laughs> um, because I love helping people find the things that make them happy. Yeah. And I think passion is a part of that. Like just writing down. I think sometimes we think your passion has to be, a certain thing and it has to be lucrative or it has to be super creative right right but it doesn't have to be it's whatever makes you happy is mm-hmm. your passion if you enjoy cleaning that could be your passion if you enjoy starting businesses like Leonie and I <laughs> that could be your passion if you enjoy talking that could be your passion making people laugh cooking um shopping <laughs> whatever you're driving some people like to drive whatever your passions are like write those things down there's this quote from a rapper I think it was the truth the a truth oh, yeah mm-hmm. he said The thing that was it, um, the thing that bothers you the most, the thing that you're meant to solve. Mm. Right. So that can also be it. Maybe Mm -hmm. you're just bothered by um, people who who are rude to children. So maybe Mm. you're supposed to be in education or maybe politics bother you or maybe who knows what it is. Maybe there's something that just irritates your soul. And maybe you're meant to solve that problem, yeah. right? Or yeah. maybe it's just something that you just love to do. There's so many routes to why you are here. And I think you talking these things out, right? These things out, see what type of emotion come from it makes a difference. I think the worst thing people do is they pick up hobbies that they think are popular, not things that they enjoy. Mm-hmm. Like I know so many people who want to start like Airbnb businesses. But they have no desire to host people. <laughs> they don't like hospitality. They don't like it, like it, but they heard it makes money. It's not going to make you money because you're not passionate about it. Like you spend so much time in business, especially when you have your own business, it becomes taxing when you're not passionate. Mm -hmm. But when you're passionate, you won't mind working those extra hours. You Mm -hmm. won't mind not getting paid what you think you should in the beginning because you're like, I'm passionate about this. It's going to come together later. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. Passion is important. So writing these things out. What do you do every week? What makes you happy? Oprah said, passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. So yes. it worked for Oprah. She a billionaire, right? <laughs> so yes, find what excites you. And then if you're in a place like like this person who wrote, mm-hmm. um, are you... Is there, I would ask them, is there anything that excites you right mm-hmm. now in this? Because you're feeling, it seems like you kind of feel a little dull right yeah. now or a little numb. So is there a glimmer of hope or excitement anywhere in your life? Yeah. If not, I would say try to find that first before you try to answer these questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that that's, that's start there. Start with happy. Yeah. <laughs> start <laughs> exactly. with happy. Exactly. Okay. Next, examine your strengths. Mm. So... Uh, take the strength to test. Oh, so wait, what am I talking about? <laughs> the strengths finders. <laughs> the strengths finders. So, um, this was that something that you put? That's a resource you put in there? No, but strength okay. finders <laughs> is just a you do the assessment and it tells you just what you do well, mm-hmm. what like your skills are if it's communication or bonding people together. It's actually really really helpful because it kind of freaks you out a little bit because. You'll read it and it's like, how does this person know me? Mm. I don't know if you've ever done it before. No. It's weird. Okay. I've done it twice because usually corporate jobs make you do it. Mm-hmm. So I've done it three different companies because they want they want to know what makes you tick. That's mm-hmm. why they want to know. <laughs> but um, you just answer random questions. These questions, you'll be like, why does this matter? 
But the assessment, when it comes together, you're like, oh, that is me. I might have done it. I've done so many of those. But it's really tests. cool. Um, okay. They have a lot of different ones, but Strength Finders is the most popular one. Mm-hmm. And it helps people realize, oh, I'm really good at that. I never thought about that being a strength of mine. And it just kind of helps you put words to what you already know about yourself. Right. So that goes back to answering the question about feeling aimless. Mm-hmm. It's like maybe if you know, if you have a, a arrow pointing at what you're good at, mm-hmm. you can try those things. Yeah, start there. Yes. And also don't be afraid to experiment. Don't think that the first thing you're going to do is something that's going to hit. Mm-hmm. If it, like keep trying trying at things and live a go in with an experiment experimentative person uh, yeah, mind. mindset yeah. because um if you don't then everything just comes becomes so rigid and mm-hmm. so and it could, if you don't make it then you built this fear of failure yeah. which in life we should demolish more and more the fear of failure because that's mm-hmm. how we learn that's how we get to the answers we're seeking it doesn't have to be a one and done type of thing yeah i love that Next, reflect on your experiences. Mm -hmm. So that's going back to what we were saying earlier um, when we were talking about the geomapping. Is that Mm -hmm. what you said? Yeah, uh, genogram. Genogram. Um, So reflect on your experiences. For me, um, in this journaling I've been doing and this transformation I've been feeling is I've been going and doing like a comparison between how I was before I had this transformation and mm-hmm. where I am now. Mm-hmm. And i have a list of like 16 or 17 things of like this, like the market changes that mm-hmm. the marketable changes that have happened mm-hmm. um, since I started doing this um, self improvement work, mm-hmm. um, reflecting on that. So then you can have a very clear, um, picture of the changes you've made and the experiences you've had so that when you when you can you can draw back onto it That's when good. you need it you know what i'm saying That's when you need good. a reminder yeah mm-hmm. sometimes you do need that sometimes you need to write things down when, when they happen good where they happen bad so you can remember because it's so easy to forget like it's mm-hmm. so easy to forget mm-hmm. like it's freakish like when i really think about like man I had a good year this year and this year, and I'm only thinking about the bad year I had last year. But I had, yeah. It's so easy to forget. So that's really, really good. Right. The good stuff, I don't know why the good stuff's feelings is more fleeting than, yeah, than the bad, the bad stuff that stick around for years. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let it go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I have to yeah. tell myself, let it go, girl. Move on. Like, move on. Yeah. <laughs> like, remember that one time my mama said, da, 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 da. Ooh, that, well, if, you're still, if you're still offending. <laughs> well, no, she, in, she's in the a prison. reoccurring. She's reoccurring. But if you're, I, I was watching Bridgerton. Oh, I don't know if you've seen it. The I new never, season, no. it's really good. I tried one episode. I'm like, what is I actually going on here? Bri- I love no it. Thanks. I love it. But there's this woman on there. She's very old. She's probably in her seventies. Okay. Older woman, and her, she has a younger brother. He's like, I don't know, twenty years younger than her. And so she has a problem with him, mm-hmm. and he's just like not knowing why. Okay, <laughs> now they're adults, and he's like, what? What is going on? So he asked her, he was like, what is, like, why do you have a problem with me? What's the problem? Right? (laughs) And she recalls this moment where she felt like he ruined her life. Like he, she was supposed to marry this horrible man Mm. and she was trying to run away. And she over, she got caught by her dad and she had to marry the man. And she heard her little brother, like, tell the dad, like, oh, did you catch, like, those little brothers are the reason why she got caught. But he was like 10 years old when he did this. Okay. Mm -hmm. She was like 20 something. And she has now been 50 years. (laughs) <laughs> and she's still mad at the 10 year old brother of hers and he's a grown man but like sometimes we'll do that I'm like this woman talking about he was 10 no it was like like what I was a child he was ch- <laughs> I am a boy a ch- <laughs> but like we do that you know like mm-hmm. we do that so try to, to document the positives more than the negatives yes and not, <laughs> and not even for me when I document it's not even about the positives it's about the changed behavior mm-hmm. and what, those, what you became yes, how you evolved exactly the, the, the evolution mm-hmm. document the evolution that's good yes okay so, the next one yeah core values Mm -hmm. i like to define this as like writing out your mission statement Mm -hmm. and your value statement businesses do it so if you're like how do i do that just google how to write a business mission or value statement or you could just check the link in the bio check the link in the bio (laughs) um and do it for yourself it doesn't have to be for a business that you're doing just do it for you Mm -hmm. i'm gonna do one for what is crystal's mission statement what is crystal's value statement um and, it, and that kind of helps you. I mean, corporations use it to decide how they function. Mm-hmm. Like everything that businesses do, they try to make sure whatever they're doing is within their mission statement and with, within their core values. It's like their guiding principle. Is mm-hmm. this ethical or not? No, it's not because we were dedicated to helping those who are 
unfortunate, right? Mm -hmm. So do it for you. So Mm -hmm. it can help you with dating. They can help you with (laughs) jobs. Like maybe you're like, I'm not going to take that job because it's not aligning with my mission and values or I'm not going to do this. It just kind of helps you maneuver life so that you you never feel like you're making decisions and later you're regretting it because it wasn't who you were. Right. Right. So, yes, check the link in the bio. Find out your top 10 values. Narrow them down to three. Find out um, just who you are and write it out and be clear about it. And, and and repeat it to yourself so you can remember who you are, who you want to be, and what you stand for. Um, yeah, so that's what I would say for that. Yes. Next, explore different paths. So going back to what I was saying earlier about don't, don't just focus on one idea or one thing that is going to change you or you want to, this is your purpose or this is your vision or mm-hmm. something like that. Like, explore different paths look and see test and experiment see what you're interested in mm-hmm. before you nail down on like this is it and don't be afraid for it to uh, change so ha- there's this uh, document you can get into in the description where it's something that you're supposed to use as a living document mm-hmm. so you write down your your mission your purpose and your vision okay and you look at it every year or you can look at it or you could change it every five years or whatever mm-hmm. but uh, I would say let, let it stand for maybe at least six months and then do it no less than that um but it helps you understand that again you can change these things Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be set in stone it should be a living breathing document because we are people that have go through several transformations we level up over again and again throughout our life Mm -hmm. lord willing we get to live a long one we get to live you know live many lives yeah so don't be afraid to put it down on paper because that it's not the end all be all i like that Mm -hmm. like that a lot the next one seek inspiration so this is when you're you're more filling your mind with things that will help you grow Mm -hmm. Right. So spending time reading, listening to podcasts, watching YouTubes, uh, reading articles, maybe research articles, watching the news, whatever lane your what you think you're trying to figure out your passion is like dive into people who are kind of doing that and and study study to show thyself approved. Like it's a whole scripture. Right. Um, And it works. Most of the most inspired, successful people are so intelligent because they spend a lot of time reading they just create this inspiration out their own brain. <laughs> like right. they studied those before them. Exactly. Even people Research. like Steve Jobs, like mm-hmm. that man was very smart. Maybe he didn't have a college degree, but he studied. Right. Right. So he knew what was going on in his industry. He knew what the newest research was. Mm-hmm. He went, I'm not a believer in just picking one person to listen to what they say. I be- I'm a believer in like having at least seven or eight people who you're like, let me pull from them. Let me pull from them. Right. Take what you need, leave what you don't. You know, if they say one thing you don't like, but this principle you like, it's okay. You can just like that principle. You don't have to like everything that they say, yes. you know, mm-hmm. because all you're doing is using this as research to become your own person and form your own opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, spend some time and don't like, I'm not a person who reads like 40 books a year or even, t- or even freaking 10. Okay. <laughs> I do the best I can. All right. <laughs> but I spend a lot of time listening to things If it's not music, it's podcast. If it's not podcast, it's YouTube. If it's not YouTube, it's articles. And I I don't have like, I won't even tell you I have one person who I'm like, I love everything they say. No, I might like this book, but I didn't like that one. That's okay. Right. But it all helps me form my own opinions because the goal is not for you to regurgitate anyone else's thoughts. It's for you to have well-informed thoughts of your own. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do that. Start with 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be crazy. Yes. Do it attainable and then i have this book it's called uh draw the circle the 40 day prayer challenge Mm. this is the book that changed my life Mm, when i say that when we first uh, were talking about this type of topic who's the author tell them the author oh the author is mark batterson okay he's very famous for his book draw the for the prayer circle or something like that okay this is the only book i've read of his but i've been it's a 40 day prayer challenge. It took me maybe like almost 90 days to do it. And okay, you got but, it done, girl. That's I got all. it done. But around day, around day 20, I was in it consistently. And okay. I've been, I've been doing what it says to do. And my, the, the, it's, 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 it's inspired me so much because of the transformation mm. I've, I've seen. Okay. The journaling I've been doing is because of what's going mm. on in this book and not because it's telling me how to journal. It's because I'm doing the prayer things it's telling mm. me it's, it's recommending you do. It started a fire. It lit a fire. It lit a fire in me. And so when I, when I say 
everything that I learned in my past and everything that I thought was just something that went in one ear, not the other. Every scripture that I read that I'm like, it's not grasping, I'm not memorizing it. Those things were just getting stored up mm. for when I got to a moment when God was ready to open it, like open the box on me. Yeah. And I'm able to be the things that this, that the right, that the person who wrote in mm -hmm wants to be when well, they want to be more confident they want to be more self-aware mm -hmm. they don't want to be aimless like all those questions that i had i, I could have wrote this letter yeah. a few months ago i love that but having gone through this experience mm -hmm. has helped me to and not and may not have all the answers mm -hmm. but i have a source to tap into to always get those answers I like that. and oh and also i have the ideas and the understanding to apply the action so I can be more confident. So I can have a purpose and a vision and a mission that I can get after. I like that. So um, reading the right things can really set you up in the right time. But nothing is for not. You will, it, Everything can be used. I like that. Even so, if you, so go get the book. Right. Even if you, whatever you read today, it may not hit today, but it may hit next it's year. Just seed is sown. <laughs> okay. no, that sometimes does happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not for you to apply it today, but when you need it, it will be there. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Um, the next one, I, I skipped one on purpose, but the next one <laughs> is finding a mentor. Yes. Um, because I feel like that has like significantly impacted my life. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have one like right now, mm -hmm. um, but I've had one most of my life. Right. Different ones. I didn't just have one. I had mm -hmm. one depending on what I needed in, in the moment. Like I had a corporate mentor who helped me maneuver my career. Mm -hmm. um, I had an emotional, spiritual mentor who helped me figure out my emotions and what's going on with me spiritually and where I'm supposed to be and how I'm supposed to maneuver my spirit life. I've had, um, I have a friendship mentor who she's just really good with people. And I feel like a lot of my connection with people, I learned from her. Oh, um, nice. so I've had different mentors mm -hmm. and they all served a purpose that helped me become better. And I respected all their opinion to where I know if they said something it's because it was for my best. And so that's important. So find a mentor, someone who kind of help you figure things out. Their mentor is not like your girlfriend. You're not calling a vent to them about. No. So and so made me mad. <laughs> Usually a time with a mentor is someone who's probably very successful and very busy. Um, <laughs> so the point of it is to learn mm -hmm. from them. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. It's not just to vent. It's Actually, I do have one now. There's a lady at my company who um, she's a black woman and she's like the head over all HR, all hiring, all everything. She's the only black woman my company has ever had in C-suite. Like mm -hmm. in the VP, she reports straight to the president. Mm -hmm. And she's just dope. Mm -hmm. And I, um, she randomly, this is how I like, I like people like her. She, um, my job is very far from her. Okay. I'm not even <laughs> kind of near reporting to her. We, we won't ever be in the same meeting. Okay. I love it's like a corporate company wide meeting. Okay. <laughs> That's how many steps it are from me to her. Okay. <laughs> um, and so she randomly chatted me she first did it on linkedin i didn't see it then she chatted me on our internal teams and said hey crystal i rather haven't met you we set up time and so i googled who she was in the company i was like well, what did i do <laughs> like <laughs> would they would they fire me like this right. like, like when they sent somebody from another department to right. fire me? i was like what did i do <laughs> like what did i say this week on the podcast That's i'm trying so to think funny. oh this it's, was recently yeah it was oh. like this year okay and so I just set up the meeting and I had no idea what this meeting was about. And she was just like, she's like, I saw you as a new hire, relatively new. I really haven't met you. And she's like, we, you know, we come from the same community. And I just want to talk to you. I okay. know you. And I was like, okay. Okay. okay girl. So we just talked and then she agreed to meet with me quarterly. And oh. so it's only for like 30 minutes. And I missed our last meeting because I messed up the calendar. Oh, I felt, Lord uh, Jesus. No, don't do it. <laughs> but we have another one coming up in July. Okay. And it's 30 minutes. So I'm going to get the most out of this woman as I can. Okay. You know what I mean? So she's one of those mentors that's not a, I don't know her personally, but I feel like she's going to help me career wise. Right. Mm -hmm. So finding mentors like that, it could be anywhere. Right. Yes. And finding people who want to pour into you and help you figure out life. So. I love that. Um, definitely have had my share of mentors um, that have my one of my mentors introduced me to my husband. Oh, well, so, so we all worked in the same space. OK. And my husband will come into our building and do some tech work. OK. I didn't for he had been coming to this building for like a year and I didn't know his name. And she was like, have you ever thought about Robert? I said, who? <laughs> 
She was like, the guy who was just here. I'm like, oh, I didn't know his name. She was like, he's been coming here for a year. Um, but if it wasn't for her, my eyes would not have been open. Oh, look at her. See? Yes. Get you a mentor. <laughs> yes. Do it. Okay. Uh, stay patient and persistent. Yeah. This part is the hardest. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, I just went, I just talked about the transformation, all that and stuff that I'm going through. But today in particular was a hard day. The last mm -hmm. couple of days been a hard day because when, for me, I, I am up from the school of seek. I want to, I want instant gratification. I want it now. I want it right now. I mm -hmm. did the prayer. I did the reading. I did the, I did the meditating. Weird. I did the, the affirmations. Yes. I want it already. <laughs> right now. <laughs> so it's like staying patient is so hard. It is. It's so hard. And when I think about, okay, I'm going through this, I'm, I am transformed. Mm -hmm. I am growing in my transformation, but I still have not realized the results of the, or I'm not be, I'm not able to uh, bear the fruit mm, or pick the fruit enjoy it. from the seeds I'm planting mm -hmm. and I'm ready to enjoy these things. Yeah. So that part is hard, especially, yeah. especially being persistent when I'm like, I'm watering this, but you don't know, you don't see the roots at how deep the roots have to go yeah. to show, to show, to sprout. And that's, so that's good right there. You saying the root, sometimes the roots need to be deeper. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a minute before you see it spout. Mm -hmm. But when I tell you that tree will be unshakable, and I'd rather that. I'd rather yeah. a tree that's unshakable the little skinny thing that blows with the uh, no. with the tornado wind. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I'll rather that. Like, even sometimes when I'm driving around Houston, I see shack-looking houses. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How, I'm like, how is this house standing? Yeah. But this house has been here for decades. Yeah. And we have some crazy <laughs> storms. Crazy storms. And this house is standing. Houston storms be on another right. level. But those houses are still standing. Mm -hmm. And then I see we had a storm a couple weeks ago on these newer houses. Fence is gone. It's just blown up. <laughs> just blown in. Down way. the street. And I'm like, that house has only been up for 10 yeah, years. Those this, Wizard of Oz houses. While this hut <laughs> is fine. <laughs> I know. I never think about that. House, way. Right. He's like, you got, um, like, what's that? Sheet metal. Right. <laughs> and so sometimes it's like, maybe something doesn't look pretty. Maybe it's not coming as pretty as you want it to come. Maybe you have to go through a lot <laughs> to, to get this together. Mm -hmm. But it's strong. Yeah. And I'd rather strong than quick and, and fable yes. and falling over. Exactly. You know what I mean? So stay patient, yeah. stay persistent. It's hard person who wrote in and you are yeah. trying to figure this out and it's going to seem like it's not hitting. Mm -hmm. It will hit eventually. And I'm telling you this as somebody who's going through the journey, mm -hmm. keep listening, keep watching because you will see, you will see the fruit as it's happening in real time. Yeah. Okay? Like even when we think about our podcast, it's been... We started talking about it maybe end of last year. We've mm -hmm. been filming since January. We've yes. been launched since March. Feels like a lot longer. It does feel like a while. <laughs> right? It's really March. It was like the end of March. Right. It is It is June. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have not been that long. It feels long. It does. No, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to get a it whole is. podcast channel. So, yeah, like, it seems like it's been a very long time that we've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> but and we're just, I'm watching, and I've been, like, watching the numbers all the time on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is good. This is good. It's like, it's not healthy to just watch numbers 24 7. No, like, I do too. Like, I every, need a time, break. every time we post, like, I post anything on Instagram or TikTok, I go and look, like, mm -hmm. how many views we get. Right. Like, Exactly. You feel like a crackhead. I know. Like, it's like I should not be obsessing about all these little views, but it's like it's it not, we're not we're not about to hit ten thousand overnight. Like no. it's going to take some time. I am interested to see like, though it's if it's going to be a jump at any point or if it's just still going to be small increments. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what I can say is what keeps me encouraged is. I still enjoy it. Yes. Every time we come and record, I enjoy it. Sometimes it may be trying me on the way here. Okay. But when I get Let here tell you. and we actually start recording and talking, I'm like, I'm happy I'm here. Yes. Like, been, I think last week I was like so tired. I'm like, uh -huh. we only going to do one episode. <laughs> but the one episode was so good. I'm like, let's just do one more. One more. <laughs> right? But I know it's going to take patience. It's going to take us pushing through even when the year mark hits and maybe we won't be at our goal. Maybe we will. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm praying, but I know no matter what, I'm like, Lord, we, I committed to this. So I'm seeing it through. Right. Until you say not to. And sometimes that takes patience. It takes prayer. It takes sometimes you're not seeing the sprouting yes, yet. Like we're yes. not on Oprah yet. Like what's up, what's up with like, that? Why am I not on Oprah? Like what is up with that? It's you been six I mean? months. It's been <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be patient. Uh, which leads us to our last one is 
enjoy and embrace and celebrate your uniqueness. Yeah. Maybe what you're doing feels so huge and it's so hard to start it because you're like, I don't have anyone in my life who has done this. Mm-hmm. I don't know anyone who's doing exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and so it makes you feel insecure about your, your why or mm-hmm. whatever you're trying to do, but don't being unique is probably your biggest strength. And even if someone is doing it, they're not doing it quite like you because they right. are not you doing it. Yes. So don't let other people's brands stop you and don't let the lack of other brands stop you push through regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you, it will feel like it will, it will feel worth it when you're enjoying what you're doing. And when one day you do see the fruit of that. Yes. And I want to add, there's this other quote from another point that we mm-hmm. talked about. I think fits here. Mm-hmm. It says, try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. Mm. So when you, that? Uh, Albert, Albert, I don't know who Albert is, but okay. there's no last name. Okay. Albert. <laughs> um, and I think that fits because when, when you're unique, you are considering your value and what you have to bring to mm. the universe, to society, to whatever community you're, you're a part of or you want to be a part of. So when you think about your value and not so much a, a dollar amount mm-hmm. or, you know, what a number of any kind, like, yeah. you know, it helps you be able to ha- be grounded into something, yeah. you know? I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, before we jump into things I wish we, things we wish we knew, the last quote that we're going to have today is from Steve Jobs. Okay. And he said, have courage to follow your heart and your intuition. They somehow know what you're truly, they somehow know what you truly want to become. Mm-hmm. And I think that's huge. Like when I was saying with the, with the letter, she knows exactly what the problem is. She's very self-aware. She communicates well. Like trust, trust that, you know what I mean? Trust that you know what's best for you. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know jump into your why yeah. so let's jump to things we wish we knew okay go ahead you, you can go first okay i wish i knew that it's okay if everyone doesn't understand my why mm-hmm. everyone doesn't get the memo it's okay as okay. long as i know the memo yes um it's okay if you don't know all of who and what you are or want to become right now all all Things will be answered in time. Mm-hmm. Enjoy who you are in the process you're going through now. Because even though you're confused or you don't know today, in a few weeks, a year, or a few years from now, it'll be known. Just just live a life of purpose. I like that. Mm-hmm. Live a life of purpose. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I want to tell y'all your purpose. <laughs> Subscribing. Your purpose today is, to, is subscribe. to subscribe. Okay. Go ahead, subscribe, like, follow, share, mm-hmm. tell your mama, tell your friends, tell your boo, tell your aunties. Follow us on Giggles and Goals um, on Instagram and TikTok. I think we're on Facebook as well. You also can listen in if you can't always watch on YouTube, you can also listen on Apple Music, on Spotify, and a few other streaming Any place platforms. where you can get some podcasts. Anywhere you can get a podcast. And you can go to gigglesandgoals.com to find the full list. You also can find our YouTube link there as well. We hope that you are giggling and laughing with us as well as working on your goals and being better. We love y'all. Yes. And subscribe again. Yes. You will not regret this investment. This is good soil. Do you want to be a part of this? Okay. Bye. Bye, y'all.